You're watching Cartel TV and I'm Jenny. Today we have another car with a controversial engine choice. It's the wonderfully elegant and plush Jaguar F-Type with a 2.0-litre petrol turbocharged engine. It's a convertible. It has an 8-speed ZF automatic that we at Cartel TV know and love. It's also a rear-wheel drive sports car, but it still has that four pot under the bonnet. So, is it a tasty treat or a stale wafer no one wants? Let's find out. The F-Type is a looker. Saving money on a lesser engine does not diminish the style much, especially if you go for some optional styling features or packs such as the R-Dynamic. The overall shape has already been out for a while. With the contoured bonnet, LED headlights and the low grille that gives that sporty edge. The front is sexy, if understated, in a Ferrari-esque way. The rear, on the other hand, is much more recognisable, taking after the other more luxurious models from Jaguar. Jag obviously think it's a winning style as it's used on so many models across the brand. And I tend to agree. Now, if you want to recognize a two liter model from the outside, one of the few hints that separates it from the more powerful brothers is the exhaust tip, which only looks like this on the two liter model. Opening, closing the roof is really simple and quick with this finger lever. I think the side view of the coupe looks quite stunning. It's one of the most successful side silhouettes on the market. And this convertible is also gorgeous. And it makes sense in Australia, where we get sunshine most of the year. Sometimes too much sunshine. The engine in this one is a turbocharged inline four with 221 kilowatts of power and 400 newton meters of torque from just 1500 revs and all the way up to 4,500. Now that is a nice range. Now, if you want more power, and some people definitely will, there are other engine options including a V6 that Simone reviewed a while back that gives closer to 300 kilowatts and a beastly V8 with 423 kilowatts in the SVR trim. Yes, those larger engine options are a lot more ferocious under the bonnet, but this two litre smaller feline, she still has a good amount of pounds to her. Despite being a four-pot engine, it gives good performance, reaching 100 in 5.7 seconds and pushing the 1,500 kilogram heavy car all the way to 250 kilometers an hour. The small displacement of the engine translates to improved fuel efficiency that officially stands at 7.2 liters per 100 kilometers. Of course, that's gonna require a pretty light foot, so not many people are gonna find figures like that. And people are not buying an F-Type for fuel economy anyway. It also translates to a lighter front end, and that can only be good. However, all of the above is based on numbers, and they fail to represent the feel behind the wheel of even the lesser F-Type. This one is rear-wheel drive, and you will notice it. So anyone who loves that traditional sporty setup of a rear-wheel drive with a front engine, you're gonna love this car. Its most rewarding playing fields are twisty roads where the relatively light body provides loads of agility and the punchy engine with low torque more than enough push. It competes with cars like the new Cayman and it fits that picture perfectly. Another great driving feature for this car is its eight-speed automatic. The revered one made by ZF that has been used in some of the best cars in the industry for over a decade. Of course, with some modernizations along the way. It's fast, smooth, great for performance and fuel efficiency, but obviously not at the same time. Suspension is good. I mean, it obviously favors grip and cornering over comfort, but it's actually really comfortable for a sporty two-seater. Now, it might not be quite as smooth as your luxury SUV or sedan, but I have to say I'm so impressed with suspension in this car. And I think, honestly, you could still get a baby to sleep in here. The problem would be, where would you put that baby? Amelia, want to give it a try? <laughs> Despite being rear wheel drive, the levels of grip are amazing. Now you really need to push it hard to throw it off balance. And that only increases the fun factor. It does take some time to get comfortable with the idea that you can actually go really fast into some curves and still have control. The more time you spend with this car, the more you're gonna discover its capabilities and be able to push the boundaries and seriously have some fun with it. The only thing I really miss in this car would be some of the exciting pops and bangs you get from shifts and deceleration. Driving with the roof down definitely helps you hear those pops and bangs. And no doubt that with those larger engine options, it's gonna be even more exciting. So, 
is the engine good enough to make you forget about its bigger brothers? Well, that all depends on what you like. 221 kilowatts and a low down torque are definitely good enough to give you loads of driving pleasure, especially when combined with a relatively lightweight body, great gearbox and rear wheel drive. Look, if you're happy being a refined speed demon, this car has plenty of power and it is such a good drive. And at 5.7 to 100, I mean, that's not shabby. However, if you are looking to enter beast mode, then you're going to prefer the larger engine options. The interior is small, but it's snug rather than cramped. Materials really feel premium and the fit and finish are impeccable. There are loads of controls near the gear lever, but they're well laid out and easy to get used to. Now, despite there being quite a lot going on, I was able to get very comfortable within a day. Similarly, using the buttons on the steering wheel was quick and easy. Maybe that's just me getting used to the Jaguar layout because we've reviewed quite a few. Either way, you should have no problems using the features of the car. The front seats are really comfortable and supportive and they feel plush even on the longer trips. Back seats on the other hand suck and that's because there are none. But I will mention the front passenger seat feels a little neglected. I guess you do see that a lot in smaller, sportier cars. They really cater to the driver and it can be a bit boring on the passenger side. But at least I have this missile launch button. This 10 inch touchscreen is standard now and it looks great. Has Navigation Pro, in control apps, Bluetooth connectivity, Meridian sound systems and more. Finally, including Apple CarPlay, which looks fantastic on that wide display. Now, wind in your hair won't improve boot space at just over 300 litres. But honestly, it's not that bad and we will manage to get most of the equipment that we needed into this space. And it's actually bigger than the Jimny. In terms of safety, the Jaguar ticks most boxes. Just some of the features present here is rear traffic monitor, blind spot assist, electric parking brake, emergency brake assist, ABS, EBD, valet mode, cruise control with speed limiter option, driver condition monitor, lane keep assist, and more. Interesting, rear view camera is an optional feature that costs just above $1,000. Now, just like with other Jags, there are loads of customizable options that let you tailor the car really to your needs. This is a nice way of saying that there are loads of customizable options if you're willing to pay a lot more for them. This convertible will cost you $130,000 without all the extra features. But our specific one right here costs $144,000 plus on road. Fun! That word perfectly describes this car with this engine. It is not lightning fast, but it is more than fast enough to be entertaining. It's not wheel drive, but it is a wonderfully agile rear wheel drive machine that gives you loads of fun. It does offer great comfort, but driving is still number one. All else, it's tech perks, great seats, reasonable comfort and safety additions are just bonuses that make this fun machine even better. So is there room for this on the market? Only time will tell, but I think there is. I mean, I would definitely make room for one myself. Even though it will be in the shadow of the V6 and the V8 options, the two liter definitely has its own appeal. Thanks again for watching Cartel TV. So what do you think about this two liter? Would it be enough power for you? Or would you prefer the V6 or V8 options? We wanna know, leave it in the comments below and we'll see you next time. Peace.